A sensory deprivation tank, also known as an isolation tank or float tank, is a tank of water used for a type of alternative medicine called flotation rest, where rest stands for restricted environmental stimulation. The purpose of the tank is to deprive a person of their senses in order to promote muscle relaxation, treat physical pain and anxiety, improve mood, and reduce depression. The isolation tank and flotation rest therapy was developed in 1954 by Dr. John C. Lilly, a medical practitioner and neuropsychiatrist who experimented with sensory deprivation while studying psychoanalysis. Two of his subjects, Glenn and Lee Perry, helped Lilly redesign the tank, making it more accessible to the general public. Initially, the tanks were upright, filled with seawater, and subjects would have to use a breathing apparatus and be suspended underwater. By laying the tank on its side and switching to a higher concentration of the less corrosive Epsom salts, floaters are able to lay back and relax. The Perrys took the product and started their own business, making it into a global industry. Float centers started popping up all around the world for years, but took a drastic decline in the late 1980s and the 90s due to the AIDS epidemic, as people feared that they could catch the disease from shared water, even though you do not share the same water as another person. Finally, there was regrowth in the 2000s, and by the mid-2010s, the float industry was in full swing. The tank contains 30 centimeters or less of water, and over half a kilogram of salt per litre. These salts are usually Epsom salts or magnesium sulfate. The air that surrounds the tank is set at skin temperature, and the room is dark and soundproof. When the lid is closed, it eliminates all outside sound, sight, smell, thermoception, which is your body's heat sensor, and tactile sensation from the pull of gravity. The tank lid does not have to be closed to receive benefits. In some cases, a pool is used, rather than a tank, to give a more user-friendly version of the therapy. These less intense variations can still be hugely beneficial. Remove all of your clothing and jewelry, shower before entering the tank, enter the tank and close the lid or door, gently lie back and let the buoyancy of the water help you to float, music will play for the first 5 to 10 minutes to help you relax, you will float for 60 to 90 minutes, music will play again for the last 5 minutes of your session, then you can get out of the tank, shower and get dressed. The various effects of sensory deprivation tanks and flotation rest therapies on athletic performance are well documented. It has been found effective in speeding up recovery after strenuous physical training by decreasing blood lactate. It also gives you maximal blood flow and lowers blood pressure and cortisol levels. Sensory deprivation has been shown through brain imaging studies to regulate a part of the brain called the amygdala. The amygdala controls strong emotions like fear, stress, and even pleasure. In simplified terms, sensory deprivation has been shown to regulate an overactive amygdala, which reduces anxiety. The Laureate Institute for Brain Research has shown that a 60-minute flotation rest session will greatly reduce anxiety in people with anxiety disorders. The European Journal of Integrative Medicine says that floating in a sensory deprivation tank has been found in a handful of studies to increase originality, imagination, and intuition, which can all lead to enhanced creativity. The jury is still out on whether or not the tank will cause hallucinations. Many people have reported having hallucinations, and studies have shown that sensory deprivation can induce these experiences. In one study, hallucinations were merely seeing coloured lights or abstract shapes, which were described as pleasing, but were known to the subject to not be present in the room or the tank. The extremely high salt content allows for the patient to float without worry of safety. In fact, to turn over while in the solution requires a major, deliberate effort. Death from the tank is extremely rare, and in the past has involved personal use of the device at home, alcohol or narcotics, or has been an elderly person or a small child falling and drowning. You should not use a flotation tank immediately after shaving or if you are sunburnt, as the high salt concentration may cause discomfort. You should not use a flotation tank if you are under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Flotation tanks are not suitable for people under 16, or people with certain medical conditions, such as the following. Epilepsy, kidney disease, low blood pressure, any contagious disease including diarrhea or gastroenteritis, open wounds or skin ulcers, and claustrophobia. 
Check with your doctor before use if you have the following conditions. Any heart conditions, asthma, sensitivity to chlorine, bromine, sulfate or magnesium, severe skin conditions such as psoriasis or eczema, or psychosis. Your skin should not wrinkle as Epsom salts have a softening and soothing effect. Users may experience a heightened sense of smell, sound and light after a float session. For some first time users, you may experience nausea. Bacteria, microbes and other pathogens cannot generally grow in highly saline water. That being said, proprietors should be transparent about how the tanks are cleaned and how hygiene is maintained. All users should shower prior to entering the tank. The entire salt water solution should be filtered three times in between float sessions. Tanks should be disinfected using a combination of ultraviolet light and bromine, or chlorine depending on the tank design, and regular physical cleaning of the tank's interior surfaces and the room itself should occur.